For Kumu Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is research and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled Elections 2024, Prospects for the Future. You place a lot of weight on the state collapse needing to be in our focus and not simply the ANC losing its majority. Why is that? The media focus was most of the time on whether the ANC would get 50% of the vote or not. And what I believe is a foundation is whether the state is functioning, whether water works, electricity works, roads, the whole lot of things like this. So I was trying to point that out. But let me say by way of self-criticism that I was very negative towards both the DA and the ANC. And I must say that the way they have conducted these negotiations, which is public, has been very mature and has also been in a way that made one less cynical. You know, when the DA spoke about stability, the ANC spoke about stability, I used to think I can't trust either of them, but they made a very good case. And I think given the crisis that we're in, we can't waste our time with frills that don't help restore the country to a path that can remedy the problem. So I wanted to say that in addition, although you didn't ask me, because I believe if I've done something wrong, I must say so publicly in the forum where I've said it. And you also place a lot of weight on transport problems. How important is this? Well, you know, there's a lot of problems of infrastructure wherever you look. Now, I don't look all over, but the transport I've been aware of for a long time, uh, although it's not my area, because I remember around 1997, uh, reading an article in the Financial Mail where they were complaining about the roads being damaged by heavy trucks and so forth. And in a nutshell, what that illustrates is how, first of all, instead of the railway working, you've got heavy trucks on roads that shouldn't be having these heavy trucks pounding them every day. Secondly, it's not an efficient way of transporting goods, especially when one is trying to export overseas. And you have these things in parts of Asia where something has to arrive at 10 past 10, something else at uh, 10.40 and all of that. And for industry, it's very important, especially for exporters, but also inside the country. Uh, you are supplying to a particular manufacturer and our manufacturing industry is in trouble so that if things arrive late or don't arrive uh, at all, it's a problem. But we as ordinary citizens of the country, as ordinary inhabitants of the country, uh, we also need transport and transport, the cheapest transport used to be by rail. And now people can't use the rail and taxis are much more expensive. The rail has been resuscitated in some places, but then it collapses again. So there's a there's a very serious problem here. And I see in today's paper, which I haven't finished, Transnet could be fixed in a fairly short period of time, don't know how many years. I hope it's true. They've surprised us with the no load shedding for quite a while. So that's why I place weight on trans transport and transnet being remedied because these are central for our economic development, but also for township dwellers. And you know, under apartheid, black people were further away from their work than white people. So it's more expensive and it hits the oppressed people. And also, Raymond, you have spoken often of black people still, still being oppressed. So can you relate this more directly to state collapse? 
it's related really to the experiences that black people continue to have in South Africa today. The people who don't have houses over their heads, the most of those who don't have jobs, uh, most of those who live in unsafe conditions are black people. When the police have a roadblock, they don't stop me. They tend to stop black people. And when you see them lying on the pavement being searched, you'll see there's not a white person there. So the experience that the average black person has of post-apartheid South Africa is very similar to that of before. You have situations where mothers have killed their children and themselves because they are starving. They can't get money for food. They can't get a job. Uh, and to get to a job interview, if they've got a social grant, often use up most of the grant. So there's a lot of these things which make it correct to refer not to the formerly oppressed, but to the oppressed people of South Africa with the same identity as before, black, meaning Africans, colors, and Indians. And lastly, Raymond, why is there so much hostility towards home affairs? Are they not just doing their job? Well, you see, home affairs uh, has a lot of documents that are life and death for people. If they don't have a document, they can't prove that they're a citizen, which is a requirement for certain jobs. If they don't have an ID document, they can't often get accommodation. I've done interviews with people who've told me that when Zimbabweans are poor or coming to collect their documents that are ready, they just throw them on the ground. So people have to scramble on the ground in indignity to do it. Also, you're often told, come and collect it, this, that, and the other place. And then they say to you, no, no, uh, the information you are given is wrong. So they're given the runaround as a, on a daily basis. Like if you say to someone, you'll have to go to home affairs for that, they say, oh, and that is the experience that people have of home affairs, which may not be the worst, maybe the police are the worst, but home affairs is pretty bad. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about elections 2024, prospects for the future.